Okay, welcome to module two. And today we are focusing on missingness, which I think a lot of you said you have problems with missingness in, in your data. So hopefully this will be useful for a lot of you. The objectives for today are to introduce different kinds of missingness mechanisms, understand how missingness impacts statistical analyses, we'll do a review of complete case and its limitations, introduce common types of imputation methods, and understand how, how to prepare your data for imp imputation. And at the end, we're going to introduce a strategy to help you select an imputation method given your data set. So I just want to highlight where we are in this whole process. We're still at the top. If we zoom in, we're focusing sort of on these pathways here. This morning, we went down the route of uh, complete cases, and today we're going to go down this pathway. I'm sure this is familiar to many of you. When you open up an R data set, it often is just riddled with missing values. This is a common problem in many biological fields. What people might not realize is that there's different kinds of missingness. And the ideal case is when data are missing completely at random. This is when the missingness is independent of both both the unobserved and observed values of other variables. So basically the missing data are just, if you randomly take out a bunch of them, it's just a random subset of the observed data. For example, if you just accidentally spill your drink on some lab notes or you just lose some randomly. Um, and this case is the easiest to handle, but unfortunately it's often not realistic. Then we have missing at random, just sort of our, it's it's the second um, second easiest. Um, so this is when missingness is dependent on observed values of other variables. And uh, an example of this might be if we're missing body size information on deep sea fish because of their remote environment, for example. So we're missing them not because of body size, but because they're just hard to access and study. And I think this is quite a an opinion in the, in the literature that missing at random, um, the name can be misleading, and it might be better called missing conditionally at random. And it's often a safe, safer assumption to make than missing completely at random. So remember, it's missing because of observed variables. And then we have missing not at random is when missing missingness is dependent on the value of the missing variable itself. Uh, for example, in mammals and lizards, smaller bodied species are often more difficult to detect. Therefore, the data on body size is missing because they are so small. And this is the most difficult missingness mechanism to handle. And a lot of imputation methods, unfortunately, can't handle this one. Um, but we do have some more advanced methods that, that you can use on these. So oftentimes, uh, people will use the complete case analysis. Uh, this is when just species with missing information or entire columns are excluded. This is convenient and fast. And it works well when data are missing completely at random, as long as we're not throwing away too much of the data. But as you can imagine, there are some limitations here. We are throwing away a lot of information, which can lead to reduction in statistical power and makes it harder to include additional variables because we sort of have that have that trade off as we add columns. Um, it's hard to start. We're squeezing our data together every time we do and we have less less species that have the data available for all the different variables, or less rows that have data available. And it's especially problematic when observations are missing at random or missing not at random, as it can lead to biased uh, results. For example, if you remove all your deep sea species because we're missing their body size data, you will have an overrepresentation of the shallow water species. So it's just, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to defend a complete case analysis most of the time. So our alternative is imputation. And this is when the known observations are used to predict the values of the missing data. And methods, imputation methods often assume data are missing at random. The size of the data set can be retained this way and the statistical power can be uh, improved. 
Some examples of imputation methods are mean, are mean mode replacement, and this is just simply replacing the missing values with the mean or most frequent value of the known observations. Uh, this is fast, as you can imagine. It's a conservative estimate, but it's often not very accurate because you're kind of just swinging all your, va all your values towards the middle. But it is a useful baseline method to compare other methods to. We have k-nearest neighbor, uh, which is when we use um, the algorithm sort of involves using a distance matrix to determine the k number of nearest neighbors that are closest to the observation with missing values. And you can select the you can select different values of k, and it uses information from the neighbors to fill in the missing values. This one's pretty straightforward as well, and it's non-parametric, so it doesn't assume any distributions for the data and it can be used for both numerical and categorical data. Unfortunately, it is computationally expensive and it does not do well with very high dimensional data sets. And choice of K can have a huge impact on accuracy. So you often have to test different values of K and that can take quite a long time. So we have Miss Forest. Uh, this is an R package. Essentially, you just build a random forest model using the observed data to estimate those values that are missing. It's an iterative process that repeats until imputed values stabilize. It's also non-parametric and can handle high dimensional data sets. And it can be used for both numerical and categorical data. It's also very computationally expensive as a lot of imputation methods are. And then we have multiple imputation. And you can think of multiple imputation as sort of a, sort of a framework. An example of this is the MICE R package. Uh, it stands for multivariate imputation with chained equations. This is when single imputation is performed several times, and it provides a measure of uncertainty for your imputed values because we're repeating it several times. And there are many different models available within this sort of framework for both uh, numerical categorical data. There's a lot of documentation on this uh, package as well. However, you have to be very careful about your choice of model. And again, it takes quite a long time to run. So I'm just running through sort of the framework of, of the multiple imputation process here for mice. You'll start with an incomplete data set value with or a data frame with missing values. Then you'll perform imputation multiple times on the incomplete data set using the mice function. And I'll show you this afternoon and mice has several models available that you can you can sort of uh, customize according to the the type of types of data you have so you're doing it sometimes and then you will have several imputed data sets at this point with no missing values and the next step would de would be to perform your analysis of choice on your data set using the width function so essentially say you wanted to do a regression you would apply the regression on each of the imputed data sets. And the last step is to combine or pool the results. And you can use the pool function for this. And it averages the parameter estimates of the imputed data sets and provides you with a measure of uncertainty, a variance, variance over the repeated analyses. And I just wanted to mention here a very hot topic. Patient literature is phylogenetic imputation. And this, I guess it centers around the concept of phylogenetic signal, but basically including phylogenetic information or evolutionary relationships among organisms can increase the reliability of imputed data and just boost the accuracy. And this is because of phylogenetic signal, which is the tendency for related species to exhibit similar trait values due to a shared evolutionary history. If you're looking uh, on at this tree here on the left, if you had to guess what species D would look like, you probably guess that it looks like its relatives. So if you're interested in phylogenetic imputation, I've put a few resources in the script. You can check those out if you want. So imputation uh, is very finicky, and there's a lot of different things that can impact imputation performance. Things like sample size, missingness proportion. So you have, if you have like 90% missingness, it's probably, imputation probably isn't a great option. 
uh, class imbalances. So if you have a really, if you have a categorical trait with a, a category that's like 99% of the data, you might have some issues there. Relationships between variables. If you don't have strong relationships, they won't be very good at predicting the missing values. And it might just end up um, giving you random, random noise in your data set. And then the missingness mechanism can also impact um, imputation performance because most methods assume missing completely at random or missing at random. And missing not at random is hard to deal with. And you might actually just have to go get more data. Unfortunately, that's oftentimes the, the solution. But there are a bunch of uh, more advanced techniques out there if you're interested. So it's important to consider each of these when you're selecting an imputation for your imputation method for your data set. A strategy we sort of want to introduce today is how you can go about selecting an imputation method for your data set. And it involves missing simulations in a complete case data set, imputation using candidate methods, performance evaluations, and then applying your best performing method to your target data set. This is a figure that sort of walks us through this uh, workflow. We're going to start with an, our target original data set. Then we're going to form a complete case data set. Then we're going to simulate missing values. And we're just going to cover uh, missing completely at random today. But if you wanted to get really in depth on this, you could uh, try simulating the different missingness mechanisms. And then you could also try simulating uh, different amounts of missingness in your complete case data set. And then you impute your uh, missing values using different candidate methods uh, to produce different uh, imputed data sets. So you can use like KNN or random forest or mice and, and test those. And then you'll perform some performance evaluations. And this is when you compare the imputed values to the true observed values from the case data set. And then we'll get measures like mu squared error for numerical traits or proportion falsely classified for categorical trait. And from there, we can select a best suited method, which can be um, defined as, as the, the method that results in the lowest error rates for the majority of traits. And this is a lot to take in, but I'll run you through the, the steps in a bit. And then we'll apply our best suited method uh, to our target, and then we'll compare our sort of our um, data characteristics before imputation, after imputation, and then also to our complete case to see how imputation affects, affects our data. 